Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here from kibbyking77.com and I'm going to give you some impressions on the Pure XL from Blue. Just impressions, no unboxing, just because they actually said to me without a box, which is okay. So I figured I'd talk about some initial impressions that I'm having from the device. It is called the Pure XL XL, especially because it has a very large 6-inch 2K Super AMOLED display and also some very good specs to match it as well. Now this actually hasn't been released yet. It's going to be released on September 29th with a 349 price tag unlocked and it also has LTE capabilities. Talk about some of their uh, specs as well, but on paper, this looks uh, very promising. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, before I get into the design, real quick, let's talk about some of the specs. So let's see it on paper. So we're gonna go to About Device. It runs Android 5.1 Lollipop. We wanna go to hardware information now. So it has 64 gigs of internal storage, three gigabytes of RAM, six inch display, 1440 by 2560. It's an octa-core processor. It's actually the first US device that runs the MediaTek Helio X10 64-bit processor. So overall, I'm really excited to try out this device and get some real world performance on it because on paper, it looks great. All right, so right away, it's pretty easy to tell it's a large device and it comes with a large display. So to show you that, here is actually the Nexus 6 next to it. And this is actually just a little bit taller than the Nexus 6 to give you an idea. The top of the screens are just about lined up right now and you'll see that little extra bottom right there. It's a little bit larger form factor than that Nexus 6 and it does have a 2K display like I said, 490 pixels per inch, Super AMOLED and also protected by Gorilla Glass 3. On the back of the device you have a 24 megapixel camera. I'm excited to test that out. It does shoot in 4K as well. LED flash. You have a fingerprint sensor which I'll talk about in just a second. Uh, moving down to the bottom you have a speaker grill. This back actually does come off so let me go ahead and pull it off. All right, so here we go. Um, on the back here, you have dual SIM card slots. You have expandable storage as well. Uh, embedded battery. It's a 3,500 milliamp hour battery, so very large. And then flipping it over down at the bottom, you have the micro USB charging, 2.0 charging, and it does have fast charge. I believe it's at 43% from zero in 30 minutes. Up at the top, you have that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the left side, you have absolutely no buttons. All the buttons are actually on the right side. You have Volume, two volume rockers, you have a power button, and also a camera button. I know a lot of people do like having a camera button. Uh, you have the option, ability to press and hold to open up the camera app, and also just press it to take pictures once that camera app is actually open. On the front, you have capacitive buttons, which I actually can't figure out a way to get them to light up, which is a little bit unfortunate. And then up at the top of the device, you have an eight megapixel front-facing camera, earpiece, along with an LED light as well. Now to test out the fingerprint sensor, it actually works well, um, but one problem that I see is when you'll see I have a pin lock screen right here. When the screen's on, you can't use it to unlock the device. It does not work no matter if you're on this screen or this screen. I'm pressing and holding on it and it's just not working. However, when the screen's off and I press on it, it unlocks it right away. It works well, so you'll see I'll just hold my finger down on it and turning the screen on and off, of course, it, it's acting like it's something goofy going on, but it's actually working really well. Now, when it comes to software, it includes a launcher that does not have an app drawer. Of course, with Android, you can customize that. You have all your Google apps, all that good stuff, etc. It comes with Opera browser as well. Now, let's talk about some of the bloatware. So, you'll see you have Yahoo Weather right there, and you'll see it popped up, uninstall. You can uninstall that. You have touchpad keyboard. You can uninstall that. Uh, let's go ahead and over. You have Chameleon right here. I'm not sure what that is, but you can't uninstall it. Pretty funny. You have a Torch app right there, and you can't uninstall it. However, within the, uh, the pull-down bar, you have a flashlight right there, which works just fine. So I'm not sure why a torch is included. Go ahead and swipe over and you'll see you have a group of Amazon apps and all three of them are uninstallable, uninstallable, which is actually really good. But you'll see you have all your Google apps right here. Of course, Play Store as well on the home screen. All right, so let's load up that camera application real quick. It loads up fairly quickly. The uh, app itself looks a little cartoony, um, but it's very quick to focus, very little shutter lag. So let's go to a picture I took. So swipe over. Here's just one with obviously some objects in it. And overall, it looks really good. Um, really good lighting situation, of course. I'm going to need to do a lot more testing, and it's 24 megapixel camera. And then when we go ahead and go back, we can go ahead and select video camera, and we go to settings here. 
Let's go ahead and hop into the settings and you'll see video quality. You can go all the way up to 4K video quality as well, which is pretty exciting. Now when it comes to software, it seems just a little bit translated. Um, the reason I say that is because let's say I go to display here and you'll see an option called skylight and I can't really figure out what it does. It says use holster can be used normally after opening sunroof. The sunroof close mode will now not open. So I don't know if that has to do with these little dots on the back here. I have to ask and figure that out. Of course, it feels really smooth out of the box because of course I don't really have anything installed. Swiping through multitasking, it uh, it holds apps pretty well. So again, obviously real world performance will need to come into play in my full review video. There's some pretty neat settings, at least when it comes to air gestures and I really, really hope they work how they should. So let's go to advanced settings. You'll see uh, smart gestures here and certain ones such as smart dial. If you put your phone up to your face, it's gonna call that contact. Uh, but let's go to touch, uh, air gestures. So you have touchless wake up. So this is somewhat similar to the Moto X and previous generations where you can wipe your hand or wave your hand over your face, I mean, over your phone, and you'll see that the display actually did turn on, which is a pretty neat feature. Now you have touchless desktop control, image browsing and video control if you wanna switch between pages or pictures. So you'll see, I can just swipe on over and scroll between these pages, which is pretty cool. I don't know how much I'm gonna be using it, but it's a, it's a pretty neat feature. But anyways, those are some thoughts and first impressions on the Blue Pure XL, essentially Blue's flagship device. So review a video coming soon. I need real world performance testing that camera out, etc. But let me know what you think. Leave a comment, subscribe to me as well. I'd really appreciate it. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. All links in the description of the video below. And as always guys, thank you very much for watching.